Just go. The Lord be with you. Thank you. Welcome to worship today, whether you're here or online. A couple sad notes. First of all, uh, last week, if you remember, it was announced that Bernie Newman had passed away. There is a card out on the table for Kathy. I spoke to Kathy's daughter over the week, and they will be having a memorial service for him at Kelly's Church in uh, Clinton Township. If anyone is interested, see me about that. Also, play. Please pray for the family and friends of Eleanor Schrader, who passed away on the 17th. Her funeral was yesterday. Uh, she had been ill for some time, and it was time to end the journey. Also, the flowers in front are from Gary, in memory of two lives that were taken way too early. It was an NHL player and his brother who were struck by a, a drunk driver. So may God be with all who mourn their loss. Also, Mason is at home. He's doing well. So that is good news. Also, the uh, Attic Angels divvied up their, their take, as it were. Uh, kids in Distress, $1,000. Diaper Pantry, 2000 Food Pantry, 1000 Salvation Army, 1000 And the Blue Water Humane Society, 500 and we thank everyone who participated in that. Uh, Jennifer will be making a formal thank you in the October newsletter, so watch for that one. Uh, blessing of Animals, if you recall, is the 4th, or excuse me, the 5th of October at 1.30 next door. Youth Social Gathering is the 6th. Bible Study, we're starting a new one on the 10th. If you want to sign up, there's a sign-up sheet just outside of pastor's office. Then, in addition, we received a thank you note from kids. And it reads, wow, we can't thank you enough for your continued support for the work you do. You most recent, your most recent donation of $1,000 and all the wonderful gloves, hats, coats, and diapers blow us away. We are so thankful. Together we are making a difference in gratitude kids and this will be posted out on the on the board and then in the uh, the mail today pastor mentioned McRest and last week we had a free will offering for laundry so that there'd be money to do all that, add that laundry so we received a letter from pastor Katie Butler at Trinity dear Reverend Stibe and St. Peter Lutheran Church Thank you for supporting Trinity Lutheran Church as a partner church with McRest. Your generous donation is a major help to house, feed, provide transportation, provide shower facilities, and hygiene supplies and laundering needs of 30-plus men at our church for an entire week. Our church is only one of a network of congregations across Macomb County helping McRest to achieve their goal to provide safe emergency shelter for homeless individuals and families and to develop personalized housing plans that concentrate on overcoming barriers to self-reliance. Thank you for helping to make a difference with those experiences homelessness. Your help is priceless. Sincerely, Pastor Katie. So, with that, anything else? Please rise as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, abounding in steadfast love toward us, healing the sick and raising the dead, showering us with every good gift. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Just and gracious God, we come to you for healing and life. Our sins hurt others and diminish us. 
we confess them to you. Our lot is clear the scars of sin. We bring these also to you. Show us your mercy, O God. Bind up our wounds, forgive us our sins, and free us to love for the sake of Jesus Christ our Savior. The Apostle Paul assures us, when we were dead in our trespasses, God made us alive together with Christ, nailing the record of our sins to the cross. Jesus says to you, your sins are forgiven. Be at peace and tell everyone how much God has done for you. Amen. Continue with our gathering song. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Let us pray. O oh God, our teacher and guide, you draw us to yourself and welcome us as beloved children. Help us to lay aside all envy and selfish ambition, that we may walk in your ways of wisdom and understanding as servants of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Um, we tried to talk Marty into coming up for the children's sermon, but that ain't going to happen. <laughs> so, so I went online and Googled because we're talking today about being the greatest and then being a servant. So there is a book called The Rainbow fish. It's about the most beautiful fish in the ocean. His scales were every shade of blue, green, and purple with sparkling silver mixed in. He was very beautiful, but also very selfish and self-centered. He was so beautiful that he thought he was too good to play with the other fish. One day, a little blue fish asked Rainbow Fish for one of his beautiful shimmering scales but he refused. Because of his selfishness, he was very unpopular with the other fish. He was not only the most beautiful fish in the ocean, he was also the loneliest fish in the ocean. He told Starfish about his problem, and Starfish sent him to talk to a wise old octopus. The octopus told Rainbow Fish that if he wanted to be happy, he should give one of his beautiful scales to each of the other fish. Rainbow Fish just could not imagine giving away his beautiful scales. Once again, the little blue fish asked for one of Rainbow Fish's scales. He hesitated for a moment, but finally pulled off one of his scales and gave it to the little blue fish. When the other fish saw the little blue fish with a shiny scale, Rainbow Fish was surrounded by fish asking for one of his shiny scales. Before he knew it, he had given away all of his shiny scales except for one. Suddenly he realized that although he was no longer the most beautiful fish in the ocean, he was happier than ever before. In the gospel, you're going to hear Jesus talking to his disciples who had been arguing about who was the greatest. Jesus said to them, If you want to be first, you must be last, and you must be the servant of all. He's going to put his arms around a child if you welcome one of these, you welcome me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one that sent me. Sometimes we think, even here as adults, that it's always the best. You have to have the best of everything. You have to be the greatest at what you do. But that's not what Jesus is telling us. The most important thing is to think of others first and ourselves last. If you want to be great in God's sight, we should look to help others rather than trying to be the greatest. And we pray. Dear Jesus, help us to remember that being the greatest isn't important. You must be willing to help others and be the least. Amen. Good morning. The first reading is from Jeremiah. It was the Lord who made it known to me, and I knew. Then you showed me their evil deeds, but I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter, and I did not know it was against me that they devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruits. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you, O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind, let me see your retribution upon them. For to you I have committed my cause. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read responsibly Psalm 54. Save me, O God, by your name. In your might, defend my cause. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. 
For strangers have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life, those who have no regard for God. Behold, God is my helper. It is the Lord who sustains my life. Render evil to those who spy on me. In your faithfulness, destroy them. I will offer you a free will sacrifice, a praise to me, O Lord, for it is good. For you have rescued me from every trouble, and my eye looks down on my enemies. Our second reading is from James. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness, born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder, and you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus and the disciples went on and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying, and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was first in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, o Christ. You see that. Grace, peace, and mercy be with you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Last week, we heard Peter's exclamation that Jesus is the Messiah. After that powerful statement, Jesus makes his first prediction about his suffering, death, and rising again. Not a good segue. Peter was stunned and told Jesus to back off on the suffering and death. After all, he is the Messiah. Jesus told him that these were the things of God, not men. As Pastor Ken told us last week, Peter was looking for the Messiah he wanted, not the one that he needed and the one we need today. Then six days after this, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him to a mountain. There, his clothes became a dazzling white, and suddenly, Jesus was speaking with Moses, 
Jesus' link to the law, and Elijah, Jesus' link to the prophets. There was a voice from heaven. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Then suddenly they were alone and were ordered not to tell anyone about the event until the Son of Man has risen from the dead. They talked among themselves, trying to figure out what this rising from the dead could mean, but didn't ask. Jesus and the three returned to the rest of the disciples to find them surrounded by a great crowd. A man had come with his son, who was possessed by a demon, and the disciples could not heal the boy. Jesus commanded the demon to come out of the boy, and with great convulsing, the demon came out. The boy returned home with his father. The reading today finds that Jesus and his disciples have left Caesarea Philippi and are now passing through Galilee, continuing the journey towards Jerusalem. He is trying to keep a low profile because he's teaching his disciples about his death, resurrection, and being killed by those against him. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. As Jews, they were familiar with the concept of the resurrection, but their concept of a Messiah did not include a suffering death. So were they just confused? One commentator suggests that perhaps they thought this was just another one of Jesus' parables. Did they keep their questions to themselves because they didn't want to look foolish? I mean, they had their pride to consider. After all, Jesus had handpicked them to leave their homes and trades to follow and learn. Or maybe they didn't ask because it could be something like, don't ask the question unless you really want to hear the answer. How could Jesus suffer and die? And why would the Messiah go through all this suffering? And if Jesus were to suffer at the hands of others, what about the apostles themselves? Did they think that they could possibly be in danger? So put yourself in their sandals. Wasn't this all too much to take in? They left everything to follow. Those here and online have an easier time. We haven't had to sacrifice our lives following Jesus along dusty trails, traveling through sometimes dangerous territories. Over nearly 2,000 years, we know the suffering he endured was real. We know the glory of his resurrection and his triumph over death is real. The love Jesus had for them and for us today is real. We know that the comfort Jesus offers is real. We know that the promise of everlasting life is real. So back to the gospel. The group trudges on to Capernaum with Jesus leading the way, and they were talking among themselves. When they arrive at their destination, Jesus asks, what were you arguing about along the way? They were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. Okay, let's imagine yourself as part of that group. Perhaps Simon and Andrew argued that they were the greatest because, after all, Jesus picked them first. Then perhaps John and James, the sons of Zebedee, reasoned that they were selected shortly after Simon and Andrew, so there was a very close contest, contest between the fishermen. Simon the zealot was ready to use violence to drive the Romans out of the land, and he'd be willing to fight for Jesus. So maybe he thought he was the greatest. And poor Matthew probably received the most resistance because he had been a tax collector, taking money from the people to pay the Roman government and perhaps skimming some off for himself. But they were silent when they were asked. It could have been that they were embarrassed that they had sunk to such pettiness. Here Jesus had been healing the blind and sick, teaching. He fed thousands with a bit of bread and fish and even walked on water. They saw how Jesus welcomed everyone to him. And yet they argued about worldly things, position, selfish ambition, status, and greatness. They thought that they would be recognized as the chosen of the Messiah. And how great would that be? This was on their minds rather than focusing on Jesus and how he was concerned with all in need. How could they possibly share in the world that Jesus was proclaiming if they just didn't get it? Imagine Jesus shaking his head and gathering the 12 around him. 
Jesus must correct the ambition of the disciples and bring them back to the kingdom of God. Okay, guys, listen up. Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Society would laugh then and even now at such an idea. In the time of the gospel, there are only the rich and the poor, nothing in between. The 12 were poor who thought that being in with Jesus the Messiah would bring them recognition and fame. But now they were told to be servants of all. Jesus then took a child into his arms. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. I always thought of this as reflecting on the innocence of a child. But the study notes in my Jewish annotated New Testament explain that the child represents a secondary status lesser than human. Children were considered property with no rights and no protection. By accepting the child in the name of Jesus, the child is accepted as a true human representative, the same as accepting Jesus as sent from God. It's really a much deeper meaning than sweetness and innocence. So let's get back to the arguing 12. Did they even realize that they had been wrapped up in worldly concerns until Jesus called them on it? They should have been listening to what Jesus had to say. But aren't we the same? The commentary on Sundays and Seasons says best the thoughts that I just couldn't get from my brain into my laptop. Quote, it is easy to be fearful in view of events outside us. It is easy to be thrown off course by feeling inside us or to work hardest for the wrong things. But Jesus invites us to practice what may be the most challenging spiritual practice of all. Jesus invites us to love our neighbor. Jesus asks that we look around for someone concrete to invest our time and energy in, someone who cannot possibly return the favor." End quote. On Celebration Sunday, Pastor Ken reminded us of all the ministries at St. Peter's. The diaper pantry volunteers spend hours serving clients, taking inventory, and packing diapers in order to provide thousands of diapers to those who cannot possibly return the favor. The members of the Endowment Fund Board approved $7,354 to charities, such as the Ecumenical Food Pantry and the Diaper Pantry, to those who cannot possibly return the favor. The Attic Angels spend hours sorting and organizing the items brought by so many. The work starts in February and ends after the sale, donating funds to the food pantry, kids in distress, the Salvation Army, the Diaper Pantry, and the Blue Water Humane Society, all who cannot possibly return the favor. But that is what we are to do. We heard the words of James on that celebration Sunday telling us that faith without works is dead. And we have faith. We are here today. Through our faith, the Holy Spirit urges us to share the gifts we have to help others. Today's words from James press us to do our good works with gentleness that comes from wisdom, the wisdom from God. It is by doing these works that we share our love with our brothers and sisters in Christ all children of God made in God's image. Doing God's work with our hands brings us closer to God and God's children. As James writes, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Amen.
Please rise as you are able. Together with the whole church, we proclaim our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Drawn together in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray with confidence for the church, God's good creation, and all who are in need. Loving God, you welcome all at your table of grace. Instill in your church a spirit of humility and curiosity that we embrace all who seek you. We pray especially for ministries that reach out to your children everywhere. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Creating God, you shape the world so there is more than enough for all. Curb our habits of overuse and guide us toward more sustainable sources of energy, food, and water. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, your peace brings justice and solidarity. Encourage peace among people everywhere. Heal those who resort to violence as a resolution to conflict. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Faithful God, you draw near to all who are in need. Bring healing and wholeness to all who suffer, especially those on our prayer list and those we mention silently in our hearts. Transform economic, political, and social systems that oppress vulnerable people, especially systems of structural racism and generational poverty. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Renovating God, you accompany all through changes and transitions. Help us to see where you are calling this community to new ways of living the gospel promise. Assure us that even as change brings loss, it also brings hope and life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Merciful God, you embrace us on our final pilgrimage from this life. Accompanying all who have died, console those who mourn, and at the last, show us the way to eternal life in you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We entrust these and all our prayers to you, holy God, in the name of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of that peace as you are comfortable. Peace be with you.
Please rise as you are able. God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to the help of all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the table, for all is now ready. You may be seated. Go in peace. The God of peace goes with you. Amen. The body of Christ. 
Christ did it for you. The body of 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 Christ did it for you. Go in peace. The God of peace goes with you. Amen. Body of Christ, skin for you. Blood of Christ, shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. God, as a mother comforts her child, so you comfort your people, carrying us in your arms and satisfying us with this food and drink, the body and blood of Christ. Send us now as your disciples, announcing peace and proclaiming that the reign of God has come near. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Go in peace. Proclaim the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.